Welcome to Building Birmingham Together, a show about Birmingham's business leaders, successes, failures, and lessons learned to encourage you to remember that dreaming is free, but the hustle is sold separately. I'm your host, Kim Lee, founder and CEO of Forge. Building Birmingham Together is brought to you today by Forge. Forge is Birmingham's first professional co-working space located in the heart of downtown Birmingham at the Pizzitz building. With private offices, open workspace, as well as meeting and event space, Forge is the place where small business owners and entrepreneurs come together, meet new people, and get work done. If you would like to find out more about Forge, you can visit our website, workatforge.com, and schedule a tour directly there. Today, I'm very excited to have Nate Schmidt on Building Birmingham Together. Nate is the Managing Director of Techstars Alabama Energy Tech Accelerator, and they just finished their first cohort, so woohoo! Um, Nate is a serial entrepreneur and software developer and has participated in multiple startup ventures, including Cloverly, Preptix, Deal Co-op and co-founded Instagift with his wife. Nate is extremely passionate about startups, and that led him to be um, to to be one of the people that started and was the first managing director of the Velocity Accelerator program at Innovation Depot, which is when I met Nate on his journey. Um, and through his entrepreneurial journey, Nate has become very passionate about the importance of mental health. For startup founders. As you listen today, I hope that you take away from Nate's story that taking care of yourself your, and your mental health is one of the most foundational building blocks to you successfully starting and growing your business. So Nate, thank you for being here today. Glad to be here. Thanks for yeah, having me. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great way to end the week. Uh, Happy Friday. On Friday. That's right. I know. I know. So Fridays always feel good at Forge. Um, everybody's easing down into the weekend. Um, so um, I would love to hear, and I know everybody else would hear, I'd love to hear just a little bit about your family, your stage of life, and where you were when you founded InstaGift. I think one of the things that really does is for the listeners can help learn how to identify. I was just thinking, you know, somebody who's listening and is in a totally different stage of life, just how they can interpret your journey and how it fits in with where they are. Sure thing. Um, I have now been in Birmingham longer than I've been anywhere else my entire life. So I don't know what that says about me that I'm now, uh, I'm fully vested, I guess. Uh, I, I know. So Kansas. now when people say, where are you from? You say Birmingham. I know. Or... Like I'm from Birmingham. That's right. Uh, yeah, I'm, fr I'm from Birmingham. Uh, I grew up in Kansas, but I'm from Birmingham. Um, grew up in Kansas, in central Kansas. If you point to the middle of Kansas, you're pointing at Hutchinson. It's a town of 40,000 people that uh, is not connected by any uh, interstate. So it, it, is, it is in uh, the farming central Kansas land and um, went to the University of Kansas for undergrad and law school, studied my final semester in law school in London and met a girl from Birmingham, Alabama. And we, one day when we were young and in love, we were like, you want to be a lawyer? Not really. How about you? Not really. Want to start a business? Oh, let's start a business. So we um, started our first company together. She thought Birmingham would be a good place to do something in the food industry. Uh, Birmingham's great for food now. It was great for food 20 years ago. So we came to Birmingham, uh, started a company in the website design for restaurant space not knowing much about startups, but just feeling entrepreneurial. Had no intention of sticking around Birmingham. I had never been. I had, to be honest, low expectations. <laughs> and, and, we, and we stayed. Uh, and, and now it's multiple houses later from downtown to Crestwood to Homewood, uh, several dogs, three kids. Now one of them's just became a teenager. Uh, oh. We're here, we're here and I think Birmingham is a great place to live and it's a great place to start a tech company. So um, like I said, fully vested, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all Alabama now. That's right. So tell us a little bit, you said that y'all decided, you know, 
Birmingham would be a good place to start a food, something in the food industry. So, and I know that you, you mentioned briefly, it started with website design and it changed along the way. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about that story? And I do want to, you to include how y'all decided to stay in Birmingham because that is a great story. Yeah, sure. I guess I'll do the second one first. We were okay. in central London. We were in central London. Jen said, "Let's go to Birmingham." I was like, "I don't know. I'll go. Let's, I'll go for six months." And I said, well, if, we're, "If we're going to Birmingham, we're living in central Birmingham. We're living downtown. It's what we knew." And back then, downtown was a lot different. A lot of the restaurants and grocery stores and resources like they didn't exist. But in two thousand. In 2001, we were living at 23rd and 1st at Liberty House Lofts, a big, beautiful loft overlooking downtown and south side. Um, and, and we were getting in the car every day and driving over the mountain to go to the grocery store or rent a movie. And, and so there wasn't a lot going on back then, um, like there is right now with all the resources that we have. And so we, it was fun. We were having a good time, but we were convinced we were going to live somewhere else. And we got in the car and we thought we'd live somewhere coastal and we just started driving mm -hmm. and we drove. We first, we first went to Savannah, Georgia and we're like, do we want to live here? And I uh, no, let's not live here. And then we drove to Charleston. Do we want to live here? No, we don't live here. And we made it all the way to Quebec city uh, over the course of a month or so. And, and then drove back and we stayed in Birmingham another year. And then the next, and had a great year. <laughs> and then the next year we flew to San Diego and we rented a car and we just started driving North. Uh, do we want to live here? Do we want to live here? Uh, finally, we made it to Vancouver and, and headed home <laughs> and then lived in Birmingham for another year and, and grew more roots here and had success in our early business here. So um, I guess where you are is, is where you live is what we learned very early on. But um, we started putting roots down here and then, you know, the downtown scene started getting better and we started getting more uh, integrated in the community and found friends we liked and things we like to do. And, and then Birmingham is now home. Um, as far as the business goes, yeah, we worked with restaurants early on and we found that they liked to feed us instead of pay us. And we didn't realize it, but we had, we were putting restaurants in the early days for web design on subscriptions. We yeah. would go to them and say, Hey, we'll design your website and just pay us a hundred bucks a month forever instead of thousands of dollars up front, and then we'll maintain it and we'll do your website. And we, what we didn't know is that we were doing something now that is second nature to any SaaS company and is putting right. businesses on subscription. And, and then we so had you, very, sorry, yeah, I just want to ask, had you seen that modeled anywhere? Like, had you seen that? Cause in 2000, I'm trying to think, well, that would have been what, like 2002. I'm trying to think if there was even anything that I did based on a subscription model. So had you seen that somewhere or did you just, you're just a genius? Uh, we lucked into it. There's no, I don't think there's a genius behind it. Now we saw a need for recurring revenue, mm -hmm. but, but had no framework for it. Mm -hmm. uh, SaaS wasn't a thing. I don't think uh, we never used the word subscription. We used the words, why don't you pay us a hundred dollars a month? Yeah. And they, and they said, okay. But then we had a problem is that many of the restaurants, um, what happens is you become, we became more successful. We were billing these restaurants. There were no SaaS back office services for them to, to handle the payments, we would send them an invoice. And so we would be sending restaurants invoices and then inevitably somebody wouldn't pay. And then we'd go to the restaurant and be like, hey, can we have that $300 for the last quarter? And as we grew as a business, we realized that uh, most of the time we were calling on restaurants, it was because would they owed us money and that didn't feel very good. Mm -hmm. And so at some point we said, why don't you not pay us anymore? Why don't you just feed us? Which is they like to do anyway. It would happen all the time is they would say, oh, instead of $300, you just want to have dinner. <laughs> um, and so we started accepting trade. And then I wrote software to sell that trade online as in the form of gift certificates at a discount. Well, that was also a little bit ahead of its time, uh, way before Groupon and, and Living Social and that whole craze. Um, Okay, and, I'm going to interrupt and, you one more time. Yeah, yeah. So did the did the restaurants know that you were selling that trade at a discount? Did they know that? Well, yeah. one, did they know you were selling the trade and then that you were selling it at a discount? Well, when we first did it, we weren't selling it. We took a risk. Uh -huh. We went to a bunch of our restaurants and said, we've got this idea. And it was uh -huh. risky. Yeah. Like, give us a bunch of food and we think we can sell it, but we're not sure. 
uh -huh. and we're going to sell it at a discount and we're going to write some software to do it. And that's, you know, how entrepreneurs work. They have an idea and they take a risk. And, um, and then we, I still remember we, we wrote, put our software out one day and we emailed a bunch of people and said, this is all available at a discount. And, and overnight, one of our biggest weaknesses, collections became a strength. Oh. Uh, people, but people bought them within minutes or an hour. And we went to Sir and West that night and celebrated. Uh, and I'll never forget that dinner because we had an idea and it worked and it really set the stage for the next um, iteration of our business, which was Instagift. We went from being a services business in the web design space to an uh, e-gift card provider. And that didn't happen overnight, but we made that transition. Um, and ultimately Instagift is now an e-gift card company that services, restaurants, and retail businesses in, you know, 30 states or so. We took that company through Techstars a decade ago. It's become a great business for our family and, um, you know, it's a fun success story. But it all happened by taking a risk a long time ago and celebrating at Surin. That's a great place to celebrate. Our family mm, loves Surin. <laughs> yeah. Was it the one downtown? I guess that would have been the only one, the five points one? Was that the? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where we went. Yeah. Yep. Well, so I know you touched on the tech stars um, and can you tell us, so, so one of the things that anybody who meets Nate, especially if it's through business somehow knows your passion about helping other entrepreneurs and, um, and wanting to see other people succeed. Uh, that's how I, when I was starting Forge came to Nate, when he was starting Velocity, um, super busy running Instagift and Velocity, the team at Instagift, literally building the space out. Um, and you were so generous with your time. But I know that a lot of that passion for helping people comes from how people have helped you in the past and your experience at Techstars. Um, so can you tell us just a little bit about where that passion comes from and how that led you to start Velocity or work with yeah, the sure. depot to start Velocity, I should say. Absolutely. And the new Velocity class just kicked off. I, I spoke on their opening day and just met, the, yeah. met all the entrepreneurs. It's a great it's awesome. class this year. I know. So check, check out Velocity. The work that Drew and Kelly are doing over there is awesome. Um, yeah, I caught a really good break. Um, my brother, who joined me at the company, an amazing de software developer, he left ESPN to come work on Instagift with me. It was his idea to go to Techstars back when Techstars was really early. And so we uh, went to Techstars Seattle. And another big decision, left behind a two-year-old son, my wife, like moved to Seattle to go through this program that uh, my brother emailed me about one day and was like, you want to go do this thing that I never heard of? Uh, and it was a real gift. Um, I got to go see what a more mature startup ecosystem looked like. I learned what it meant to be a high growth tech startup. I took investment for the first time. I was surrounded by just cool people in Seattle from companies, you know, the Microsofts and Amazons of the world to ones you, that aren't as well known, but still for Birmingham at the time would have been huge startups. And uh, Brad Feld was my lead mentor through the program, who's one of the most prominent venture capitalists for, uh, for any startup and a real thought leader when it comes to things like startup communities and, and mental health. And so once a week, I would hang out with Brad and he would talk That's to awesome. us and we would talk about some of these, these things. And he was at the time writing the book on startup communities. And so when I came back to Birmingham, I had that wealth of mentorship and experience um, to pull from. And, you know, one of Brad's central tenets is the startup community needs to be led by startup people. Mm. And I took that to heart and others in this community have taken that to heart. And one thing I love about the Birmingham overall ecosystem is that our startup community, which the startup community for me is really the founders of tech companies and, mm -hmm. and the people very close to that. The ecosystem is, you know, all the people that support entrepreneurship like Alabama Power but our startup community really is founder led. Uh, you don't have to look very far to see the work that, you know, Tony and Shagan and Brittany and Bill Smith and on and on and on and the work that you do and the work that Drew Honeycutt is doing. And um, it's, it's a very founder, founder led ecosystem. And, and that's why a program like Techstars came to Birmingham because mm -hmm. we are so strong for our startups. So uh, yeah, Techstars changed my life and, and, it's an honor to get to run that program right now. And I'm very passionate about giving back and, 
And it's one thing I love about Birmingham is you can see the results of your efforts. Um, mm -hmm. You go and get something like Velocity off the ground and now four years later can kind of see the impact that's had on the depot and, and on startups, which is really, really cool. So uh, very passionate about helping startups. Yep. Um, so changing directions just a little bit. Um, I know that through your first year um, <clears throat> at Velocity, you had a different perspective because you were no longer just a founder and um, not that you were just a founder, but you know, you, you were able to step back and see a bigger picture of a group of founders and, and assess their needs and see what was going on with them. And um, your passion for your realization of the importance of mental health for founders um, really grew and you grew into a passion to where you really focus on that for your founders. So could you tell us a little bit about that journey and um, what, what has given you that passion? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm someone that has ridden the startup roller coaster, the highs and the lows. Uh, I have dealt with stress and anxiety and sleepless nights and depression and, um, and that is something that is common to many startup founders or most startup founders, really. I, call, I, I think of in terms of being a double whammy, there's real research that has been done that says that the type of people that are drawn to entrepreneurship are the types of brains that are prone to potential mental health issues at an above average rate. And, and then you put them in a job, uh, running a startup is inherently stressful. So you're taking people that are the most prone to stress and anxiety. We all are, well, life's stressful for everyone, but you're taking people that are especially prone to depression and anxiety and you're putting them in jobs that produce, uh, produce uh, stress. So taking care of yourself is something that I'm really passionate about. Um, I've had the chance to work with multiple founders. I realized the second I started talking about this topic, it really resonated. Mm -hmm. I gave a speech once to the, the, the second Velocity class and I did about five or 10 minutes on depression and mental health. And afterwards, it's all anybody wanted to talk, to talk about. So anytime I speak about this, it really resonates with a lot of the people uh, that I talk to. And I faced real challenges. I've, I've dealt with founders now that have, um, that have that dealt with major stress issues and major depression issues. Uh, unfortunately, we dealt with an issue in our first velocity class where a founder took his life. And, and so how we think about health, how we take care of ourselves as founders uh, is really important. And I care a lot about it and I'm trying to get better about uh, how I deal with it myself and how, I, and how I teach the entrepreneurs I work with to really prioritize it in their own lives. Mm -hmm. So where in your journey did you um, realize maybe you weren't doing so well? <laughs> Maybe, you know, maybe that that not making it a priority was truly affecting you and things needed to change. Well, certainly after my first year at Velocity, which was a fantastic year and a trying year, and it was all of the things. Mm -hmm. um, and then and then my time at Velocity came to a close and I was trying to figure out what my next thing was. And I was emotional and I wasn't sleeping and I was depressed and I didn't know it. Mm -hmm. And I talked to my wife and I was like, one day I said, you know, hey, Jen, I think maybe, I think it's possible I'm dealing with a little bit of depression. And she's like, yeah, you think? I'm <laughs> like, yeah, I, I do think. She's like, dude, you've been dealing with that stuff as long as I've known you. Like, did wow. you not know this? And we hadn't talked about it, but it was, I guess uh, she loves me no matter what and waits for me to come to my own conclusions. But apparently it was obvious to the rest of the world that uh, and the people that care about me that I was dealing with with issues and I don't describe them as major but I describe them as impactful yeah and um and so she yeah she's like no kidding I don't know if I can curse on this podcast but yeah no kidding you're not uh, <laughs> you've been dealing with this well so now do you have any um I hate to say rules but practices that you try to stick to in your life to help protect yourself um, from slipping back into bad habits or things that you tell founders? Well, you have to be really intentional about it. And it's a fight all the time. 
uh, for me, it's a, it's a constant battle to try to take care of myself. And I'm better at it some days than I am at other days, but you have to make it a priority all the time. Um, the culture in your company are the things that you talk about all the time. And I think of it more like this is something I have to talk to myself about all the time to make it part of, you know, my own personal culture, I guess. Uh, do things you like to do. That's a good place to start. I really like shooting baskets. Uh, I'm not a, like a basketball player from way back. I just like to shoot baskets. And so I do a lot of that. Uh, I don't mind running. So I try to run sometimes. I don't like going to the gym. I just never have. So don't force yeah. yourself to do things you don't like. I think is a good place to start. Um, when I talk to founders, uh, one message that is really central to, to any time I spend with them is that when you're a founder in a company, everything you do is part of the company. It sets the tone mm -hmm. of the culture of the company. So we find ourselves thinking, oh, I can't work out today because I have to work on the company. When you don't realize that you working out is working on the company because ultimately as the leader, the tone that you set in, in all of your life in total uh, comes into the company. Mm -hmm. And so if you're a more well-rounded person and a healthier person, you will have a healthier company. Mm -hmm. And so, so all of the founders need to think of their entire life as related to their leadership at the company. And so how you think about health uh, is really important. If you want, here's an idea, here's something you can do to really impress investors. This is uh, my invest, <laughs> this is my investor pro tip. Training. So, okay. Yeah. So if you're going to raise money and you tell the investor, like, I need a million dollars and the investor's like, cool, how are you going to spend it? And a lot of founders, uh, this is where things go wrong. They're like, oh, I'm going to marketing, like Facebook ads, I'm going to hire a dev. Um, the best thing you can do when an investor asks how you're going to spend their money is give them a good answer. And here's an, here's an idea. At some point say, well, I'll tell you one of the things I'm going to spend money on, your money, uh, to implement uh, this wellness policy within my startup at a very early point. And so here's how we're going to prioritize it. And here's how we're going to spend regarding wellness. And here's how we're going to think about health among employees. Like if you want to look smart at the very early stages of your company, talk about how you're going to address health as you scale. Mm -hmm. And the investors will be like, oh, yeah, that's, I like this. I like this founder. Um, you have to start thinking about it early on. You have to think about it every day. And it's, it's a battle all the time. So I have to think you get pushback from the founders and maybe not in um, words, but in their habits. So how do you help them work through that? I mean, I just, you know, think of all the things that have to be done and you hear, they hear you saying you've got to take care of yourself whatever that is, sleep, exercise, whatever. But, you know, they also see the long list of things that, that have to be done and they're the ones that have to do it. So how do you help them think through that? Well, a thing like Techstars um, is really intensive and you're supposed yeah. to work on your company a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I can't force anyone to, you know, to do anything they don't want to do. Um, I, the way that we address it is we talk about it. And we yeah. talk about, uh, we make it a priority to talk about a lot. We mm -hmm. talk about how people are doing. We talk about how they're feeling. We talk about how they're thinking about health in their own lives, how, they're, how would they think about health in the long terms of their companies. I try to lead by example. I try to be the best version of myself during a program like Techstars because if hopefully if they see me uh, taking care of myself, then they'll you know, wanna take care of, their, of themselves. We go on walks. All my meetings at Techstars this year, we, it's about a mile loop, but we would leave the Denim building and we would walk around Railroad Park and we would come back. So a meeting with me- That's awesome. Was a walk around Railroad Park, which for all the founders meant once a day or so, they'd walk around walk around Railroad Park. For me, it meant like I would do 10, <laughs> a ton of laps. Yeah. Um, that was awesome for you. It came at a price for me, but um, there are no shortcuts. There really aren't any easy answers. You just have to- be intentional and just stay on it. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I don't know anything else to do other than that. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I mean, it's just uh, you, from what I've seen from other people, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, you know, it's just very easy <laughs> to get caught up in everything and the weight and to, yeah, like you said, feel like taking care of yourself can slip um, or the, 
allowing guilt to take over thinking I should be working, not doing this. Um, so yeah, being t- very- t- turn it, turning off, like mm-hmm. take time to turn, when you turn on, when you give yourself a, some grace and you give yourself a break, take it, take yourself up on it. You know, I had a founder come up to me the other day and they were like, gosh, if I could just get away for three days, I think in the, in the middle of our program, like I think it would make the biggest difference in the world. It would make me so much better. I would be so, I, love it. I know I can't, but I would love to. It's like, what are you talking about? Go take off for three days. It's fine. Uh, mm-hmm. if that's what you need. So give yourself a break. A lot as startup founders, a lot of the priorities that we have and deadlines are self-imposed. Yeah. Uh, especially if you don't have customers yet in revenue, like it's just, you're making stuff up. So give yourself time to, uh, to, uh, to disconnect. It's hard. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for being honest and open about that. Cause it's not, you know, I think I've experienced what you've said. Once you start talking about it, then people really want to talk about it, but it's often, you know, kind of a sticky subject to bring up. So thank you for, and for what you do for our community, being open and encouraging people to continue to talk about it. Cause everybody's dealing with it in one way or whether they're going to admit it or not. Um, But I also want to talk to you about how great it is that Techstars is in Birmingham. I remember how long ago was it when the, when it was in the works and, um, and then when you got the job, which, you know, ties back to your roots, but tell us a little bit um, really what a big deal it is for us to have tech stars in Birmingham. It's a big deal. Uh, tech stars is the top um, investor for very early stage startups in the world. And they're the best at what they do at, at this type of accelerator. Um, and, and so what happens is, is in early stages in a community like ours, there's a lot of energy toward innovation and entrepreneurship, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, but as we mature as, a, as an ecosystem, um, there are certain things that help us level up. Uh, having a huge exit or multiple huge exits level us up as a community. And we're starting to see those. Mm-hmm. And because what happens is it creates wealth and then there's a feedback loop and those folks then come in and invest in the next wave of startups on terms that look familiar to what you might see in the Valley or in Austin, Texas, or maybe not in the Valley, but um, so there are certain things that level a community like Birmingham up uh, in the eyes of the startup world. And Techstars is one of those things. It's a big deal that Techstars came here. Um, I, I wouldn't, 10 years ago, I wouldn't have never, I could have never imagined that that would happen. And, and so it's, it's, a, it's a moment and we're having lots of moments around here lately. Yeah. Um, and so it's just another proof point uh, that our community is headed the right direction and has a really bright future. I don't think there's any doubt that we will soon have our first billion dollar startup exit in Birmingham. Um, I think, you know, I'm hopeful that as we do this Techstars program year after year after year, that we will become a leader for energy tech and clean tech in the world. And I think that that's likely. And that is, that truly is Alabama Power getting together with Techstars and the Department of Commerce and EDPA and planting a flag here and saying, you know, it's an, if you build it, they will come. Like we're going to make this an energy tech hub and a clean tech hub. And then you make that become true. And so tech stars is helping our community make that true. And it's cool to be a part of, uh, and, and tech stars was a big deal for Birmingham and it's an honor to get to be involved. Um, yeah, it's so the end. So a small plug. So this year, the demo day, which the demo day is, where at the end, everybody pitches their company looked different than y'all had imagined, I'm sure. Um, But you were able to make a video that was awesome. It was, it it wasn't quite the same as being in person, but it was, it was pretty great. So we will include the show in the show notes, the link to that video. Um, But the cool thing about having a video like that is now it's not just localized to the people who were there so many people can see it and see what's going on and, and really use as a brand for the city as well. Um, so we'll include that if anybody wants to watch that. We, we worked hard at it and we're, we were proud of it. Uh, we'll keep doing that. Uh, we would have normally in a, in a non pandemic had a big party at the lyric as what (laughs) we had planned. 
and have and I have no doubt we would have packed it out to celebrate the conclusion of our program and those and the companies that went through. Um, but much like what COVID has taught us all is there are different ways to do business. And us being able to really lean into that video and put it out to the world. It's helping me with recruiting now. And yeah. it got people involved that wouldn't have normally be involved. And so I think that's something we'll continue to do. And then hopefully next year uh, in December, we'll, we will celebrate at the Lyric with a, a demo day for our class. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, so um, one of the, the reasons that I started the podcast and it's titled Building Birmingham Together is just to really focus on what organizations are doing, but also how by us each doing our things collectively, we're making Birmingham a better place. So I, you've already spoken to like the importance of tech stars and what that is doing to build up Birmingham and to make Birmingham a better city for everybody who's living here, <clears throat> not just um, the companies that are raising money and making money and developing products. But um, for those who are listening, um, what do you think, I may not have asked, warned you of this question, but what do you think that um, others in the city can do, like other business owners or um, just as a collective ecosystem, we can do to proactively make Birmingham a better place? Well, I spend most of my time just laser focused on, on startups. And so my answers to a question like this would be biased toward the startups. Yeah, um, that's okay. I certainly understanding who the startups are in the community and supporting them being mm -hmm. first customers of, of the, of the products that are coming out of the city. Um, taking an interest in the startups at Innovation Depot and at Forge and at, and in our Techstars program and in Velocity and in Generator and all of these things that are happening, mm -hmm. who's winning Launchpad and, you know, putting our dollars to work in some of these companies because the payoff can be hundreds of jobs for, you know, that we've seen that, you know, or thousands of jobs maybe at, at some of the companies we've had, who knows how many jobs shipped is created. <laughs> um, and, 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 you know, the largest building in our downtown now has a startup logo on it, which is amazing. Yep. Yep. But it's the early it's the early grassroots support that makes that possible. And so let's you know have our startups be real Birmingham stories. Mm -hmm. And that's the the business community supporting them. It's the consumer community, the household supporting these companies. So figure out who the startups are, support them. Okay, and one last question. So do you have any? Um, maybe aha moments or life or lessons that you've learned over the years of your entrepreneurial journey that has shaped the way that you um, do business or interact with people? Hmm. I'm pretty <laughs> optimistic. I think, I, I think entrepreneurs are optimistic by nature. Mm -hmm. Everything kind of feels possible to me. Feel like I can build anything to solve any problem. So I would certainly say um, to be optimistic. When people come to me with business ideas, I'm like typically like, okay, let's go see if we can build that. Sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, you know, as entrepreneurs are willing to take risks. Um, I certainly have been willing to take risks in my career and go after big ideas. And so uh, there is an entrepreneurial mindset that I'm not sure if you can teach it or not. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a big discussion. Is it? Is it something you're born with? Is it something you can teach? Um, I, part of me thinks it's something you're kind of born with, but it's an, it's an optimism and a belief that anything is possible. And so I try to lean into those things as much as I can and be open to new possibilities. I don't know if that was a very good answer, but yeah, what I answered. That's right. Hey, it's your answer, your lessons. And that's and what I it is. Great. Yep. That's right. Okay. Um, some rapid fire questions. One, okay. um, what are some podcasts that you listen to that um, give you inspiration for what you do, have shaped how you do business? Um, my pod, see, see what I really wanted was like a super smart podcast answer oh. to this question, but I don't really have one. So here's what I do. Uh, so here's my, here's my bad habit. Let's talk about opposite of health. Okay. Uh, in the more, in, here's one of my favorite things to do. Get in my car in the morning during the NFL season 
Okay. Uh, go get a monster energy drink. No calories. Oh, super uh, healthy. Of course. <laughs> Uh, go listen to the Bill Simmons podcast where he guesses the NFL line. So he guesses what the Vegas odds would be. And I hit pause before he guesses everyone. And I try to see if I can guess it better than him. And I'll drive around for an hour doing this, uh, drinking my Monster Energy drink. So this is the, uh, instead of the best answer to the question, I'm giving you the <laughs> world's worst answer to that question. <laughs> But I bet when you get home in the morning to your three kids and you've had a monster energy drink, I bet you are great dad, <laughs> full uh, of energy, excitement, yes. ready to help them tackle the is, day. Is this an ad for monster? Is that, <laughs> no. I, I'm able to be a great dad because I drink monster. <laughs> no, I'm trying to justify for, or not justify, but there. when you've had all that caffeine, you come home and you're fired up, ready for the day. <laughs> <laughs> there's no there is no justification but it's just it's friday we're all on it's all on display here that's right that's right okay, okay. so what about um books that you recommend have there been any pivotal books for you in this journey oh to kind of stick on culture as we talked about before mm -hmm. i really liked um what you do is who you are the ben horowitz book uh, it made me think about culture in a new way um so many times as we think about culture and companies uh, it thinks of the things we write down when we go explain what our culture is, but it really, it speaks to my philosophy that uh, the way that you live your life all kind of um, relates to how the company behaves, especially for the founders. And I guess that's in the title, right? What you do is who you are. The things that you do uh, when no one else is looking is the culture that your company will have. Mm. And it starts at the CEO level. Um, I've liked both his books. Um, and, and so... That would be at the top of the list for me that I've that I read a little bit late, but recently. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also working really hard right now on getting funding for a few of our companies, and I just revisited Venture Deals by Brad Feld and Jason Mendelson. It's the uh, you know, my favorite work on the topic of how to go figure out fundraising, which is really hard for companies and it's stressful. So talking yeah. about stress, fundraising, super stressful. So those would be two. Okay. Well, great. Well, thank you so much, Nate, for joining us today on a Friday afternoon. I really appreciate it. Thank you for sharing your story. Um, we will have the information in the show notes, but um, if you meet Nate, you will know that he is always willing to help and listen to a good idea, and he's going to encourage you to go for it. <laughs> So thank That's you, right. Nate, for what you do in our entrepreneurial community, startup community, um, the countless hours that you selflessly give to others. So thank you very much. This was fun. Thanks. All right. Okay. All right.